Perfect with no flaws at all Are the laws of love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Islam is a way of life الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to a new episode And a continuation of the hardest topic thus far Marriage and not only marriage Specifically the uh, qualities you look for in a spouse Specifically does the outer appearance have anything to do with the internal relationship with Allah We were actually going at it a particular level but then the time had run out. So we will uh, pick up where we left off. And you had something to say. I interrupted you. So uh, go ahead, sir. Well, I think because uh, we're discussing the qualities that we're looking for in a woman, we all know we look for the one who is religious. But we, we were discussing what does it mean religious, really? But I, alhamdulillah, Sheikh Asim, we all agree, certainly I do, that she's going to make kitab and sunnah. That's what she's always ready to go back to this. I found this the most useful thing in my own personal life between me and my wife. The fact that we're always ready to go back to the book on the sunnah. We have a disagreement, we're ready to go. It's a fantastic uh, attribute to have. But I want to throw a question in, into the mix, so as to speak. This is a student of knowledge said to me. He said, I don't want my wife to be a da'ya. Uh, yeah, I don't want her to be a da'ya. I don't want to be sitting all night discussing fatwa. And every time I do something, she's going to say this is haram and this is the delil and this. I want my wife to cook for me, to clean for me, to look after my house. I, I, she should be religious. Is he married? Yeah. He yes, married? he's married. <laughs> and well, I don't know his wife whether she fits this criterion, but she's certainly not known to be amongst the female students of knowledge. And uh, what do you have to say about this, Sheikh? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulullahi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa First of all, I believe that this brother a student of knowledge is looking for a second wife. So he's looking for any justification. This is his first wife. This was his criterion before he got married. Second of all, this is a problematic because on one side, we have Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, saying that I would love a scholar and a wise man to leave his brains outside his house when he goes to his wife and be like a child with her, meaning playing and jubilant and having fun leave his scholarly manners so his, his wife says uh, should i serve food and he says inshallah it is permissible <laughs> Akhi, what is this she's your, she's your wife well, you know, some, some of the practicing brothers will play football together yeah you're playing soccer come on Akhi, pass the ball jazakallahu khairan and if he's running behind his opponent yakfir allah give me the ball what what is this it's a norm everything has to be Islamized. Islamized. Yeah, yeah. This is not the, the way. way. But unfortunately, some of the brothers, and we will get into this later on, hopefully, in, in, this, in, our, in this life, not in another life. Uh, some of the brothers justify, you know, they try to justify whatever they're doing. So he has the best wife. And she, mashallah, is a good cook, and she takes care of him and of the children. He wants, he can't find a, a reason to marry another one except to find faults in his first wife. This is what I... No, no, Sheikh, this was the brother's criterion when he was looking for a wife. This is, I knew him from before. From before he was getting married and he said, Abdurrahim, I, I mean, you know, maybe this is simply because his experience of sisters who are involved in dawah. My wife is involved in dawah, alhamdulillah. Yes. And she's not like that. Yani, she does not say, is this permissible or not? No, you should not do this. This is not a marriage you're talking about. Unless, I mean, it's, it's the same sex, probably marriage. This would happen, but... And, and probably men just oversimplify. and They just like, it's just one block like this or one block like that. And it's not it's just the male way. Probably such women don't exist. <laughs> For a woman to be like a, a scholar at this level that everything with her is like, you know, the brother, I'm speaking about the brother. He's, I don't know whether he came across a lady like that. But do women like that actually who are so scholarly in their behavior with their women are more... I think the point is, uh, if you marry someone, here's the point, if you marry someone who is very committed to dawah and uh, seeking knowledge and spreading knowledge, she's not going to be in your home looking after you and your family. She's going to be out teaching and uh, 
giving circles of knowledge and teaching the sisters and you come home and there's no one there because mashallah she's uh, the point needs to be clarified uh, she can be a diet okay but she has to to sort out her day and and balance it okay it's not that for instance mashallah some of the sisters they are very knowledgeable they are scholars you can call them and to just to lock her be behind doors okay a waste Okay, but you can sit down and organize, and this is the problem. The problem, some of our sisters really, may Allah guide all of them, they are not really expert when it comes in the terms of the marital life. And they, some of them, they tend to neglect, which is this we are going to address, inshallah, later on. So maybe the brother had a bad experience, or he heard this, but a, a real faqiha, a real sister who is educated, knows Islam, she knows how to sort her day and how to organize herself and how to fulfill her commitment towards her children, towards her husband, so she can organize herself. Can I say something just in support of, I know there's lots of sisters uh, listening to this and it's not just uh, sisters with hijab or scholars who are watching this. And everybody needs to get married. And, um, and nowadays women are being asked to be everything. Right there with their jobs, in the dawa they're being asked, they're asked to volunteer, they're asked to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the put now she has to homeschool, and there's all these pressures coming down on her. And then now she uh, a woman's trying to get married and we're dealing with men who sometimes are so simplistic and if I can say a little dumb when they when they're just like, Oh, it's gotta be like this is the one quality I want or whatnot. I'm just I just had to say that. No, you can't, you can't say that easily, but yeah. at the end of the day, a woman is addressed by the Qur'an and Sunnah to do something. So, again, we do not customize Islam to their needs. We customize our lives, men and women, to what Islam requires. So if she says that my job is a priority, you tell her, Allah Azza tells you to sit in your home. If you cannot balance. Allah says that in the Qur'an. وَقَرْنَا فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ it's in black and white. So if she goes out and she works, then that's not. Th this issue. is an eye, isn't it? <laughs> this is uh, this this is an issue. Which yeah, is but we I'm can, not we can address, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, kind of when and okay. Because no, but actually, I know well, it's it's a heated discussion. But now a woman saying that if I work outside of the home, does that not make me religious? If she is capable of balancing between her job and her husband, but if she's unable, what comes first? Either now to gain the dollar and lose Muhammad and Fatima or take care of Muhammad and Fatima? Lose Muhammad and Fatima. Okay, so that's <laughs> it, in black and white. But if we can, for instance, and we know the, the burden, financial burden of life and she is helping her husband and she is working in a decent uh, environment, that is a different issue. Islam is not against that. Islam is always about the adil the insaf, the balance, how the problems is, takes place when imbalance takes place. Sheikh Salim. That's the problem. Normally marital problems happens here. And at the end of the day, who's the bread gainer? The woman? So many people living in different parts of the world, they find by absolute necessity, sometimes both the man and the woman have right, to work. Right, it, it's right. a survival. It's, exactly. it's how you survive no financially. No problem, yeah. we, we just... But I think, I mean, I think people work these things out. I mean, hopefully we have this maybe a very monochrome viewpoint of how things are. But in reality, you know, life is quite complex. And I, I think the brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, work these things out. I mean, you know. I, I want to go back to the root yeah. of what a man's looking for. A man's looking for looks. And I know we're being all nice and it's like, it sounds good, oh, marry this one, marry. But at the end of the day, the man's just looking for looks. By the way, it's not a problem to look for looks, yeah, right? No the problem. Prophet said, look, look yeah, at what pleases I'll, I'll you, I'll tell right? you where the problem is, though. Yeah. Because if a woman is wearing hijab and she's dressed modestly, the other woman is propping herself up with high heels, with makeup. And she's, if they were in a lineup, the woman who's dressed immodestly is stepping out. And she's gathering attention. So we actually have a problem here that the brother is getting mixed signals. The sister's not putting on makeup, she's dressed properly, yet she's the better wife. And the one that's out in the open, who's not necessarily you know, the best wife for this person, she looks better. Mm. So? But, uh, so, what I'm, no, no, so what I'm saying is that I think we need to give some guidelines, reminders for the brothers, that just that outward beauty needs some guidelines too. 
that you shouldn't just look for that outward beauty. That's what the hadith says. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm, exactly. I'm fine with that. Exactly, that's what the hadith says. They should not be deceived. That sister who wears hijab is as beautiful as the one, but she doesn't outwardly show it. Of course, she doesn't display her beauty. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to take a break. But based on what, on what the uh, brother said, this will be what we will be dealing, inshallah, with after the break. In regards to the issue, I don't know, you receive emails. You receive emails. Oh, uh, from what I've personally experienced, because of the Islamic awakening, it seems that more brothers are looking for practicing sisters than beautiful sisters. Nowadays, the, the new thing is, uh, I want a sister that fears Allah. And maybe you can elaborate on, on this, inshallah, after the break, if you have uh, shared this experience. So uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. A way, a way of life. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. So before the break, I had asked a question based on my humble experience. Yes, uh, there are many looking for looks, but yes, there are many, many more now who just want a good wife that he can have a peace of mind with. Surely beauty is a preference, is a, is a bonus, but do you really think nowadays from your experience, this is still the ultimate criterion, beauty or religious commitment? What have you experienced in your emails, your contact with people, your mixing with people? Well, I believe that it is not the only, but it's a, a added value. People put it on their priority list, but definitely, if you say, well, I, I, I met this gorilla and she is extremely righteous in practicing, they said, well, I'll do respect. So, yes, it is important for them to be practicing and forthcoming to, towards da'wah and, and, and abiding with the Quran and Sunnah, but there is a, a something acceptable. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing wrong in that, but this is not the only thing that makes a good wife. There are so many other things, as Yani Shah Ibrahim indicated, that you might find someone who is abiding by what looks to be the Quran and Sunnah on the surface, the way she deals with others. Yes, practically, what what should those criteria be? Well, for let's, example, let's tell them. Let's say, look for this, look for that. I, I personally, aside from what externally looks like a practicing person. I believe that a woman has to be, if I'm going to marry one, if I were to marry one, she has to be a person who is content and satisfied. See, I, I get a lot of tons of emails. What does that mean? I'm going to get to that. I get tons of emails from brothers saying that, hey, no matter what I do, my wife is never content. And one of the reasons for women to be admitted to hell is being uncontent and ungrateful. In the hadith, the authentic hadith, we were told, the Prophet tells us that Ibrahim, peace be upon him, visited his son Ismail when they were in Mecca. And he had not seen his son for a long time because both of them were messengers and they, they do as they're told. So he went into the house and he met his daughter-in-law who, who did not know him. So she hosted him as a guest, an old man in his like 100 years of age, and he asked her, how, how are things? He asked her about his son, and she told him that he's out working. So he asked her, how are things with you? And she started complaining. We have little water, we have no food, we don't go out, it doesn't take me to dinner. It's a, this is from my pocket, huh? not from the hadith, but this is what she was complaining uh, similarly about. And Ibrahim was listening, and then what did he say? He, she said that, give him salam from this old man and tell him to change his doorstep. Dorman. And he left. Ismail came, peace be upon him, and said, who was he? And she described the man, and she, and she told him what he instructed her to say to him. And he said, this was my father, and he was instructing me to divorce you. Go, and you are divorced. Ibrahim came years later, when Ismail got mad at again. And the same scenario took place. But this time, his second wife started praising Allah and saying, everything is alhamdulillah good. We're, we're, we're always full. We're never hungry. Alhamdulillah. She is praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibrahim gave her the same advice, but he told her to say to her husband to read him the salam and tell him to uh, keep his doorstep. And when Ismail came, he told her that this was my father and he was telling me to keep you because you're a good wife. So the issue of content, not every one of us is capable of being financially fit. Not all of us can give a car to his wife or a driver or a big mansion 
or pocket money or to do this or take her places, send us flowers. I mean, not every one of us is able, able to do this. So a righteous wife is the one who's tolerant, who is patient, who knows the condition of her husband and she is always content. Yeah, I mean, I remember advice a friend of mine gave me before I married. Uh, when I first converted to Islam, he gave me a piece of advice about the sort of woman you should marry. He said, Abdurrahim, don't marry a woman who loves the dunya. If you marry a woman who loves the world, you will be a slave. All you will do is work, work to buy her this and buy her that. And he said, marry someone who, if not buy someone, marry someone who is... Uh, Slavery. <laughs> yeah, stuff, uh, yeah, that's it. That's uh, forgetting. Yeah, that finished right that one. Position. Yeah, but no, I mean, he said, marry someone who is exactly how you described. She's easily content. She's happy with little, whether you have it, whether you don't have it. It's very tribe. Like I've a, seen some brothers in misery. Uh, the criteria that I, that I advise brothers, I say that, you know, when you get married, you know, the focus is, oh, her beauty and, and you know, you want some religion and stuff like that. But when you have a child, when you have a child, there's no doubt that you will love your child more than you love your wife. And the same goes for the women. There's no doubt that the mother loves the child more than she loves her husband. How come? No, no. no. Okay. Oh, okay. You have to justify that one. We have that's children here. A... We all have children here? <laughs> that's a, that's I, I love my wife. <laughs> more than no, your children. Me, me, than my children. Okay. There are different levels of love. I'm too scared, man. I have to declare yeah. this. Yeah. My wives are watching. There are actually different levels of love. Okay. There is love which is, as you know, it is ibadah, act of worship, loving Allah, loving the messenger. This, is, this type of love is ibadah. There is love, okay, which is a must, it is obligatory, okay, loving the deen, loving whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposes. It is obligatory to love it, even if you don't practice it, even if you don't do it. For example, a sister, she should love the hijab, even if she's not wearing it. She should not hate it in her heart. So, so when she sees a sister wearing hijab, she says, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. InshaAllah, one day I will wear it. So she will get hasanat. So this type of love is obligatory. There's a type of love which is haram, and loving the haram, and the natural love. So there is love which is innate, instinctive, something built within. So loving your wife is natural. Loving the children is natural. But here there is advice for the sisters which is really, many brothers are complaining, that w the moment they start having children, the husband is neglected. Yeah, different type of love, yeah. Because he's busy with the, with the children. No, here you need to also uh, strike the balance. I'm curious though, how can one reach the point where he, he knows that, okay, I love this child more than my wife or my wife. I mean, how does one really reach the point where they can... Okay, we'll understand it if I finish the point. Exactly, I just, I'm <laughs> bursting to please finish the point. Okay, okay. This is what I meant. Okay, so forget, uh, maybe I, I exaggerate when I said about, you know, oh, loves this more than that. But no doubt, you love your child and you love the best guidance for your child and you want your child to go to Jannah. True. This is going to be one of, you know, one of your top goals in your life to see your child go to Jannah. Your, the wife, is going to become the teacher of this child, no doubt, in those beginning years. So, um, and, and the child is going to become a mirror reflection of that, of that mother. So what I tell people, as I said, that when you have a child, you're going to love your child so much, and in you know, some cases more than your wife, and your wife is going to be the one influencing the child. So ask yourself, when you go and search out a wife to get married, this brings us back to the whole point here, is... What qualities do you want your child to have? And go and find that in the mother. So when you make your list of, oh, I want a wife that's beautiful, I want all this, like, no, what do you want your child to have as well? Somebody might say, I want my child to pray five times a day, I want them to learn Arabic, I want them to do this, I want them to have good character. And then you say, now let me go find a teacher for this, for my child to be. And then this is even, I would say, that you're making the intention. That's a, a beautiful way to go about it. That is the meaning of that Adin, Baba. And I think that's a that what the Prophet ﷺ meant. Because the word of the Prophet ﷺ, that Adin, is so comprehensive. And this is one of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. He would say a small, a few words, very concise, but they covered the whole thing. So, okay, so the sister that you marry is the sister that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sister who will help you and facilitate the way for you to reach the Jannah, 
save herself and save her family. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed's point is correct because there's a hadith I just remembered that highlights the importance of the wife over the children. So this is a very important thing to have. The Prophet said, told us, Hassan, the best of the righteous women are the women of Quraysh. The best of women to ride camels are the women of Quraysh. They are the kindest to the children and the most obedient and loving to the husbands. So it is a very important point. Not only that she's knowledgeable, that she is, mashallah, praying night prayer. This is good. But how is she with the youngsters? If I propose to a sister, and I know I got this call a couple of days ago here, and a sister is crying on the phone. You're with me in the car, I believe. And she's saying, I cannot love my child. I have one child. I don't want, I don't want any children. I hate children. And she's crying. She said, I told her, how many children do you have? She said, I have an eight-month-old girl. And I, I told her, you love her? She said, no. I said, subhanAllah, think again. She said, uh, um, yeah, but I don't like children. And she broke down. This is shaitan. What you look for is some, a girl, a woman that is known to be affectionate, to have mercy on the children, because this is the one who's going to take care of your capital in this life, which is your children. Yeah, but people are different and they have problems from... But uh, the, the thing is that uh, a young man was advi asking me advice and saying, uh, you know, I want to marry this girl and, you know, she's nice and she's a good girl and she likes Islam. And So I asked him this one question. Is this the woman you want to be the mother of your children? This is what I said to him. Do you want, is she going to be a good mother to your children? This is the question I have to ask you. And I think this is a very, very important criterion to think about that, what she going to be and how she's going to be as a mother. I even put it from the perspective, that's why I started off with saying that how much he will love his child. Because if you just ask, is this the mother you want for your children? He's not coming from the, like he doesn't care really. He hasn't thought about how much he wants guidance for his children. And that's why I put it from the child's perspective. Well, our time is running out. In fact, our time ran out. Uh, but it seems that there's a lot more to say in regards to the uh, qualities which one should look for in a spouse. And so we promise our audience, inshallah ta'ala, with Allah's facilitation and uh, permission, we will dedicate the next episode strictly for that. Zakumullah khair for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Do you know what Islam says? It says that life's the greatest test. It says that life's a borrowed space, returned upon rest. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is.